back, it's Christine again with the Artist Pod, and today we'll be drawing a cat ghost. Um, this will be part one, so part two will be next week, so this week we're only drawing the sheet over the cat, and then next week we'll be finishing out the cat underneath the sheet. Um, as always, I'm using a Wacom Intros Pro tablet, and I'm drawing straight into Photoshop. So, let's get arting. Okay, so, um, cat's already sketched out, so, um, we're gonna draw on the sheet, which is just white. But, um, you know, like, we still have to consider light source, which obviously the eyes are done, so it's coming from above and to the right. So, right, back side of this ear is in shadow, that's very light pin pressure. Um, back side of this ear is in shadow. Um, and potentially a lot, I guess we're going to twist and turn along with the folds of the fabric. Um, really going to be the only way to make it work. Right, so we're going to twist and turn it and um, kind of fill in several points where, you know, this back side, right, the face would be rounding away. So you're still going to have shadowing happening over here. Um, because the the face is still rounding away from the light source, even though it's covered with a sheet. And then, you know, roughly, you have like the, the mouth or whatever happening over here, so roughly the bottom of that being over this way. So keeping in mind the, the anatomy of whatever we're drawing. Um, Normally, again, the sheet would just come straight down, but um, that doesn't really help us. So we're not doing that. We're going to allow it to bunch up and twist and bunch and, you know, um, fold. Otherwise, you won't really get, it won't really look like a cat. Um, so often what I'll do is um, draw in the shadows first. Um, and then add the highlights, right? And then we have underneath, we're gonna have the chin, right? Presumably in here somewhere was, was a, where a mouth is cutting over, but you would still have like, you know, under the sheet where it'd be bending under the head because we're making it a little tighter as opposed to realistic. It's the only way to make that work. Again, all edges are also still in shadow, so that's still happening here too. And allowing the drawing to shift and bend. Because that's really, really where the, the magic's going to come in, is, is getting the shadows and highlights right. Right, so we'll be doing that to all of the, like, um, ruffles, right? All these, like, wrinkles in the fabric on the sheet. Have this coming down a bit. So we need to come down a lot more especially on this side or over the other side. Um, and then, you know, doing shadows and highlights kind of around that. And then, you know, I'll check it every so often. Make sure it's still looking good, especially once we start adding the highlights, but not forgetting that, you know, all edges are in shadow, so even this edge over here would still be in shadow. And allowing, you know, again, all of those sections of shadow to, to be filled in. 
what's going to give it those wrinkles and you really want that with you know something like this including at the top even though it's a sheet you know still drawing with that same scratch board style Um, and then, you know, a few things to note before I sort of finish it out, right? This is behind the arm, that cat, of the cat. I don't know why that came out so funny. So this would obviously be in shadow. This is completely blocked because it's behind the cat's body. Um, this would be, uh, getting a little bit of light but also would still be in a bit of shadow because it's going into that recess inside but potentially is still catching some light as it twists open now this where this comes down from the arm is probably in shadow because this is on you know this pause jutting out away from the light source so that's probably in shadow here um, at least down a little bit, right? So, whereas the opposite side, this would be in highlight for the opposite reason, right? It's, it would be that arm's jutting out, so it's facing the light source. This one's turned inward, so it's away from the light source, right? But it, it sort of brights itself as it comes down. And of course, we have all these folds um, in the sheet at the bottom. as one does, you know, getting all these wrinkles in. Even here, even though this is on the light source. So I'm going to finish out the shadows on the sheet and I'll be right back. So now we're going to add in the highlights, which is, you know, usually full pin pressure. Oh, one other thing. All edges are in shadow, so let me finish out this side of the ear as well. Would potentially be rounding away. And getting ahead of myself when I'm doing things. Didn't even finish out this. Now we're going to do um, highlight, probably not doing a whole lot of areas where I'm doing full pin pressure so much as I'm adding more lines because of the nature of um, how I'm doing this. But adding more lines is the same thing. It adds, you know, you can see here I'm not really putting more pressure. I'm just adding a ton of lines as I do it. And then making sure that all of those spots where, you know, the um, I've drawn in the wrinkles and stuff are maintained because that's going to be important to make this work. So it's just a matter of doing that um, and by adding more lines instead of more pin pressure it helps me blend it better. All right, so it's just a matter of coming in here and making this brighter than that surrounding like wrinkle I created. And if I need to, I can brighten this up while I darken, or not darken, but um, brighten this up and make sure that remains darker to get that effect that I need. So ideally, right, I'm going to show you in just a second, as soon as I get this on this side, I'm trying to get the, around some thin wrinkles so you can kind of see what I'm hoping will happen. Right when I come down here and pop these off, you get kind of that idea that the fabric is shifting and moving. 
and then I can refine it as I need to. All right, so I'm going to do that real fast, and I'll be right back. All right, so that's how you draw a sheet over a cat to make a cat ghost for Halloween. I hope that's helpful. In the floating nether next to me, I have other videos of art tutorials I have done, and I will see you all soon. Thank you so much. Take care.